In the name of Allah, the most merciful and compassionate, assalamu alaikum. In my presentation today, in honor of the birth celebration of the noble prophet of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, his family, his companions, and his community. I would like to focus on the theme of the utmost degree of love and devotion to the Holy Prophet. The great saints of the past have discussed this station, some of them indirectly and some of them more directly. And in their writings, it is sometimes referred to as Fana Firusul. In undertaking this topic, I'm reminded of an Urdu expression, Chotamu Baribat, which means I'm too inadequate to dare to speak about such high matters. Still, in this paper, I will be quoting some of the great Sufis. And in this gathering today of the Ashikani Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I hope that some of that feeling of muhabbat and some of that feeling of mehbubiyat will come through. So I have taken this topic. In Sufi thought, the two terms, fana and baka, are often used in a pair in order to illuminate their respective qualities. Fana in the English language is sometimes translated as annihilation. And when indicating the position or the situation of a spiritual seeker, this fana may allude to the idea of the loss of self-identification or ego consciousness in the awareness of something far greater and more encompassing. And after I read this line, I couldn't help but think of the Quranic ayah, which actually was recited this morning from Surah Rahman. It has both the root of fana and baka in that ayah. Because then I'm going to say, well, how far back does this talk of fana and baka go in Sufism? And Sufis as early as al Kalabadi, who died in 995, have spoken about fana and baka as a pair, as a concept. Abu Sa'id Haraz, another early Sufi who spoke of fana, is quoted by al Hujwiri in the Kashf al Mahjub as saying, quote, annihilation, fana, is annihilation of the consciousness of being the worshiper, ubudiyat, and subsistence, baqa, is subsistence in the contemplation of the divine, ilahiyat. Hence, all one's actions are referred to God, not to oneself. And whereas a person's actions that are connected to himself or to herself are imperfect, those which are attached to the person by Allah are perfect. al hujwiris Kashf al-Mahjub in another place relates fana to Sufa, being pure from all existing things. al hujwiri quotes Ibrahim ibn Sha'ban, an early Sufi, who says, quote, the knowledge of annihilation and subsistence, fana and baqa, turns on sincerity, ikhlas, unity, wahidiya, and true worship, ubudiya. All else is error and heresy. End of quote. This clearly establishes the connection of fana with worship and therefore the connection of Sufism with Sharia, which is our topic today. We still later see in the Sufi teachings this relationship of fana and baqa. For example, as expressed in the teachings of the Naqshbandi Sufi, Sheikh Ahmad Sirhindi, author of the well-known collection of letters, 
Maktubat, which is now being indexed under the sponsorship of the Naqshbandiya Foundation for Islamic Education. In Sir Hendi's formulation, Baqa was associated with the station of the Holy Prophet, may peace be upon him, who returns to the world and humanity to work for social and spiritual upliftment, having passed through the state of fana, or annihilation, in the realization of the divine. Recently, scholars of Islam in the West have been debating the origin and the emphasis of the doctrine of devotion to the Holy Prophet in Sufi thought. Some scholars have tried to identify it as symptomatic of modern reformist thought, which tried to emphasize or extentu uh, accentuate the personality of the Holy Prophet and the study of his sayings, the Hadith, in order to move away from the idea of mystical union in the divine. In response, other scholars have tried to show that the idea of the Holy Prophet as the perfect man and as a particular object of devotion is an early and persistent theme in Sufism, which can be traced to certain doctrines of Ibn al-Arabi, which were given a practical as well as a philosophical articulation in the works of Abd al-Karim al-Jili. I might further add that the emphasis on devotion to the Holy Prophet does not diminish the importance of trying to draw nearer to Allah. In fact, it is rather a means to this end. Indeed, when it comes to the issue of the source for these concepts, it must be emphasized that all of the great Sufis of the past drew on the Holy Quran and the Ahadith for their understanding of the Prophet, augmenting and interpreting it, of course, by their own spiritual experience. I would like to cite a few of the Quranic verses which are most quoted in the context of discussing the highest degree of devotion to the Prophet. For example, uh, 68 verse 14, Surely thou art upon a mighty morality. Khulqun aziman, khulqun aziman. Wa innaka la ala khulqun aziman. In fact, this verse was the theme of the second Milad al-Nabi conference held in Chicago last year. Another verse which is often cited in this context is, Indeed, we sent you to be a mercy to the world. Rahmatan lil alameen. And this set the theme of the first Chicago Milad Nabi conference. This year's theme of tasawwuf and sharia is especially resonant with yet another Quranic verse which is often cited in the context of the relationship to the Holy Prophet and in fact Fana Rasul. This is the verse in chapter 3, uh, number 31. In tuhabuna allaha fattabauni yuhbibkum allah. Say, O Muhammad, if you love Allah, then follow me, so that Allah will love you. This ayah certainly represents devotion to the Prophet and the connection between this love and following the Sharia. In addition to these Quranic verses, whose outer meaning clearly points to the spiritual effects of utmost love and devotion to the Holy Prophet, there are many esoteric, what we might call esoteric, allusions in the Holy Quran uh, to this, as well as many citations in the Ahadith, which refer to this spiritual role. Just for, just for a short example, of some of the esoteric allusions in the Quran. And some of them I will mention, but frankly, each one of these could be a whole paper. The Sufis talk about, for example, the idea of the Kaab Hussein, the two bow lengths distance. That is an esoteric uh, allusion to the relationship of the Holy Prophet. Secondly, the concept of the Barzakh. Uh,